Hey everyone and welcome to my crack heart guide video. You guys have just been asking me for more and more and more character guides. That seems to be what you guys want. So ask and you will receive. Unfortunately though, I will have to dial back my production value a little bit on these videos. I will talk through everything as and when I'm doing it. So hopefully the information is still good. I'll still bookmark everything in the contents below so you can essentially be able to skip to the bits that you, you need or you're interested in looking at. But this is just all so that I can get a guide out for every single character in the game at some point, give you some, some reasons as to why I do certain things and uh, hopefully the information is still good and we're still going to go all the way through to level nine and we're still going to talk about items perks enhancements everything to do with the character as well if you do find the video useful please consider hitting the like button and subscribing if you're not already we're getting really close now to getting to a thousand subscribers things seem to be really ramping up looks like a lot of people are coming to gloomhaven who haven't even played the board game they're just coming from gloomhaven digital so that's awesome to see uh, so I would really appreciate it and if you want to see any more gloomhaven content make sure you comment down below anything in particular you'd like to see from me and i will well i will see what i can do i also stream regularly on twitch at twitch.tv slash mandatory quest you can catch me there every monday wednesday and sunday so come hang out talk gloomhaven watch gloomhaven and yeah just sort of chill out really okay guys i won't delay you any longer let's get in to the build okay guys let's take a look at our crack art cards at level one so our starting hand is opposing strike Crushing Grasp, Avalanche, Rumbling Advance, Massive Boulder, Backup Ammunition, Unstable Upheaval, Crater, Dirt Tornado, Heaving Swing, and Forceful Storm. And I will put a graphic on screen as well with the board game cards so that you can kind of pause it here and be able to see nice and clearly. So I'll put a big full screen graphic of all of the board game cards here as well. So the main kind of like difference here and the main thing that I really like about this build and what I usually play around is the combination of the bottom of Forceful Storm plus any of our kind of big uh, melee attacks that we can get, in particular Unstable Upheaval. So the idea here is that we're going to try and get ourselves into a good position at some point during the game. It doesn't have to be in the first room, it might be within the first few rooms. And what we're going to be looking to do is we're going to be looking to use the bottom of Forceful Storm to give ourselves plus two attack. We're going to hopefully have our element, our earth element, so we can increase unstable upheaval to an additional uh, two hexes away. And we're just going to do a huge attack against a lot of people. Maybe combo this with a Warhammer to get stun off as well at the same time. Maybe combo it with Eagle Eye Goggles to give us advantage and power potions, things like that. And there is some really great late game items as well that you can get that will uh, really increase your damage with this too. This is a melee attack, so it may not look like it, but this is this is actually a melee attack. Uh, the other thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be using backup ammunition to get multiple charges out of our massive boulder attack card, which is very important. And also eventually, in an ideal situation, we're going to want to use backup ammunition and we're going to want to eventually burn the top of Forceful Storm to get uh, hopefully maybe up to four targets disarmed with this at level one, which is like an insane amount of uh, disarm. And also we get that extra XP as well because we're going to target essentially four enemies with it. So this can work really, really well and get you a a boatload of XP uh, along with backup ammunition. Some of the other kind of key cards that we have which help us to get our element is Rumbling Advance. So Rumbling Advance is just a great way for us to be able to reliably generate our earth element. We can either heal in our kind of downturns when we're not going to be potentially attacking. We're just going to be holding back a little bit. Maybe we need to do a bit of a heal, prepare for the next round. And also the bottom is great for moving into position when we need to and doing that extra bit of damage. I wouldn't worry so much about damaging your allies with Rumbling Advance. Yes, it is a bit of a drawback of this card and this character it does have some friendly fire going on and sometimes you can be in a position where this can hurt especially um, in really tricky uh, situations and at higher difficulty levels but generally speaking the damage here is usually worth it to do it to your team but you know don't uh, annoy your teammates too much by just doing this all the time but uh, it is something that uh, it's a great way for you to be able to do extra damage to enemies through shields the other way that we're going to be able to generate our element efficiently is through avalanche so avalanche is a great way for us to be able to do that and also it gives us those obstacles that we're going to be able to manipulate with the heaving swing overall the crack 
car is generally speaking a kind of melee ranged build right out of the gate we're going to be moving more towards the melee side of things but definitely straight away you're going to have a mix of both melee and ranged damage but you are definitely a damage based character and you should be looking to do that although we do have access to some heals that isn't really a big forefront thing for our character our heals are more just to kind of keep us alive as we go and will help us out in the early game to ensure that we don't die because maybe we're running uh, into some problems when we're right at the start but healing is not something that you want to be concentrating on okay so let's go do our level ups so level two we get access to either explosive punch or sentient growth now this is actually quite a difficult decision to make between these two cards personally i'm a huge fan of explosive punch i love the movement this card gives you i love the initiative that this card gives you and also the top attack can actually uh this can actually be a decent attack and it kind of scales fairly well into the late game and attack four is a decent value attack so i do like this card a lot but there is also a lot to be said for sentient growth this card is absolutely fantastic with some enhancements early as well. The move to heal one, you can put a strengthen on there, which makes this card, you know, borderline busted at times, to be honest, the bottom of it. The attack one doesn't really scale very well on the bottom of this card. And I would argue that the attack two on the top doesn't scale very well either. The little bits of heals here and there can be useful because to be honest, the difference between a heal two and a heal one is not much when you're a high level. You just want to use a heal one to remove things like poisons and wound from your characters. You don't necessarily really care about healing two HP. That's not what you're playing it for. You are just playing it for the ability to clear those two effects. So I have absolutely nothing against sentient growth. And I think that a lot of people will take it in this spot. And I think that's an absolutely fine pickup. And I think it has some really great potential with some enhancements. However, for this particular build, I'm going to suggest we take Explosive Punch because, again, I love the movement, I love the initiative, and this attack is just, well, it's a lot of fun to play. <laughs> so we're taking Explosive Punch. So the card we're going to get rid of here is we're actually going to get rid of Crushing Grasp. So Crushing Grasp is, you know, it's an okay card with the attack three immobilized and it makes the element which is kind of like fairly decent thing that it does here however the loot one i think loot one is the weakest loot out of all of them in the game you can usually find uh, ways to just loot yourself in a more efficient manner if it was a loot two i think maybe at the early parts of the game you may consider keeping a loot two around for longer because it does make things a bit easier however loot one i think you can actually uh kind of run around yourself and hoover up the loot probably easy enough with this so we're gonna get rid of crushing grass and we're going to take an explosive punch we get slightly better initiative i mean the difference between 28 and 35 is pretty negligible to be honest but we do get that destroy one adjacent obstacle which is huge and the move four which is very very good because this character can struggle with movement at times so this is just a great movement card as well so on to level three so at level three we can either have clear the way or we can go for blunt force so these are a little bit more kind of uh clear cut in my opinion on what you should take here i do love the initiative of blunt force that is the best thing that this card has got it going for it really the move to retaliate one get in experience points is a very easy way to get experience points so if you wanted to speed level this character you could maybe argue that blunt force is better for that especially considering that the top could also be burned for three experience so if you wanted to just rush your character to level nine this may be a fairly good option for that however clear the way is just a really excellent little attack card on the top allowing us to move obstacles to block up different sort of avenues for movement and things like that with enemies perhaps get them to walk into traps and things this is what the crag cart is great at doing and it's the unique mechanic of the crag cart is using obstacles to your advantage and this uses it in a very very strong way now the attack 2 is pretty weak it doesn't scale very well throughout the rest of the game however you can upgrade that to a plus 3 if you use the element you could also maybe attach an extra plus 1 to this with an enhancement if you wanted to there are other things you can do and to be honest I think the fact that this could end up being quite a big AoE can be very good this also combos in a very weird way with some of the range extending helmets so hawk helm telescopic lens will actually increase the range of this which is a bit odd like the attack range not the range that you throw the obstacle so this is a bit of a weird interaction but definitely an intended interaction so something to think about maybe if you end up getting that item that you can kind of do something but as i said here i think it's pretty pretty common that we're going to play clear the way i actually really like the movement on the bottom of this too because this allows you to essentially clear traps for your own team so if you're in a 
uh, scenario with lots of archers and perhaps they keep laying traps and you find it difficult this will allow you to clear the way as the card says for your other allies to be able to then move in and not have to go through traps and also it allows you to um, set yourself up into a really strong position to be able to do an unstable or forceful storm style combo on a following turn so i also i like it a lot for that so clear the way is is the pick here and what we're going to be getting rid of this time is we're going to be getting rid of opposing strike so opposing strike is a card that uh kind of have a love-hate relationship with opposing strike opposing strike is one of those cards where it's just a free xp pretty much for an attack three every time however actually getting it to target two different things at once is kind of difficult it's a lot rarer than you think especially when you're playing kind of a a build potentially where you're playing both a ranged and a melee kind of character at the same time especially at this point you're kind of doing both of these things so you don't really want to be next to enemies so it takes quite a lot of setting up in my experience it doesn't really uh, end up doing it very often I, very rare that i get a decent opposing strike off and the bottom of this card is good for xp generation but it's really not what you want to be doing the crack cart has some kind of off tanking ability certainly has a bigger health pool than other characters so we'll potentially be able to carry some armor as well because they don't have a, a chest uh, like piece a body item that they actually really really want so they can use armor as well to give themselves a little bit of tanking but that isn't the main thing of their character i find this card to be a little bit counterintuitive the bottom of this card as to what this character is really trying to do so i think we can quite comfortably get rid of opposing strike and we can bring clear the way in okay on to level four so level four we get what is pretty much the hallmark card for the crack card this is the card that everybody uh, who's ever played the crack card will always talk about rock slide is an amazing card not only because it uh allows you to create lots of obstacles but it, those obstacles allow you to do two damage to different enemies and things which is super great to go through shields but also just the three obstacle part of this is just so important because it allows you to block things up in a really efficient manner it can really make uh, enemies that may seem really scary and they're going to be up in your face and attacking you you can just control them so easy so this this is an absolute slam dunk amazing card i don't think there's any crag card build that does not want this card at some point it, it, it's just uh, it's just such a, a hallmark uh, card for this character and so to be honest the, the kinetic assault which is the other card that we have access at four here isn't a terrible card the move one attack four is nice this extra little move here seems a bit innocuous but actually being able to just move is is really decent just being able to move an additional one to get closer to an enemy and then do your attack it just leaves your bottom open which then means you could potentially use forceful storm and this so in a way this could be an attack six pretty reliably on initiative 19 as well which is a really great initiative in fact i think this is the lowest initiative that the crowd car ever gets access to so this can be a very very good um card it's just a shame here that it's up against rock slide which is just an absolute house of a card and will just you know do so much work for you so we're taking rock slide but yeah it's a very it's a big shame that kinetic assault was uh was also pitched up against this card at level four so the card we're going to be getting rid of is avalanche so this has been the way that we've been generating obstacles up to now but it is actually a bottom creates obstacles as well which makes it kind of a bit difficult to move you have to kind of start in the right position and then use avalanche which can be a little bit awkward i do like avalanche right at the beginning of every scenario because you can always kind of use it as your first card i often like actually just playing unstable upheaval for the initiative and then pairing it with avalanche just to ensure you get some obstacles down in some key positions right at the beginning of a mission however rock slide just gives us so many better opportunities we're now creating three instead of two we're still creating that earth element we're doing damage and we're getting an experience points the movement on the bottom of rock slide isn't really a huge factor i often find that i can very rarely ever move more than maybe three in a straight line i don't think i've ever seen anyone be able to move six or at least playing digital i've never seen anyone be able to move six in a straight line so although that sounds amazing uh, it's probably very rare that you would ever get maybe more than four movement out of that i would think but the top is so strong that we really don't care about the bottom on this card 
Let's say we lose the top of Avalanche, which was a nice way to do a, a decent attack and again comboed quite nicely with Forceful Storm. However, it is a burn and it's something that we are, uh, you know, going to have to be in a, in a position where two enemies are and I have our element. I just think there's better things we can do. So we're going to get rid of Avalanche and we've got Rockside. That's just like a, a nice strict upgrade for us there with our obstacles. Okay, so on to level five. Level five, we have Petrify and we have stone pummel so petrify is a card that i don't actually hate i think petrify is kind of okay the kill one normal enemy range four on the top and create the obstacle is kind of nice because it fuels our kind of obstacle engine right of us being able to to use these obstacles in a good way the fact that it only kills a normal enemy rather than elite though just kind of cap its potential it does mean that you're going to find that there's going to be situations in which you're going to have no enemies that you can use this on because you're facing all elites or potentially that the normal enemy that you have to kill is going to be very easy to kill anyway when you're a higher level you don't really care so much about normal enemies it's the elites that give you the trouble not the normal enemies you can usually find aoe's and things like that to be able to deal with them in an efficient way so the top is okay it's not great i don't mind it but it's not amazing the bottom is actually kind of like fairly nice being able to move and then immobilize all adjacent enemies this could be really good against things like archers making sure that you move close to them immobilize them stop them then from potentially being able to uh, move away to gain advantage on their attacks can keep them just within that reach also is a very good way to set up with something like um, an unstable upheaval um, so you can kind of move in, immobilize everyone so they can't go away, they cannot move. So you can go late, move in, immobilize potentially, and then you can maybe use um, Unstable Upheaval on the next turn. And if they try to move away or they play like their heal cards, for example, that isn't going to work. They ain't going to be able to move away from you. So it's a good way of sort of sorting, stopping some of those enemies from doing those sort of things. But I think for this build, we're going to be looking more at Stone Pummel here. Now, the Attack 3 model on the top, this is basically like a much better version of Opposing Strike because it's much easier for us to get two targets with this versus the two targets with Opposing Strike. And the bottom of this is actually pretty decent and we can use this in a, in a nice way once we've played a lot of Rock Slide. So we've perhaps used Rock Slide quite a bit up to this point. And so Towards the end of the scenario, we can then burn the bottom of this and we can then start going crazy uh, with our um, with our sort of like unstable upheaval or, or other attacks. And it's a very good way for us to be able to burst down a high health enemy with our sort of single target attacks as well that we're going to be getting a little bit later. So this is uh, this is just a, a really great card. I like the model as well on Stone Pommel. I think it's pretty decent as well as you can combo the top of Stone Pommel with Forceful Storm. Forceful Storm is kind of like the card that we want to keep throughout this entire build and it's going to be something we're going to lean on a lot. So being able to get that extra plus two attack and being able to do it with this is great. And the 32 initiative is is fine here. It's The crack card doesn't have amazing initiative, unfortunately. Uh, kind of has a lot of these kind of middling initiatives and then these kind of like late-ish initiatives. So, but uh, 32 is, is not too bad and will allow us to go early some other time. So we're going to take Stone Pummel. So what we're going to swap out for Stone Pummel here is we're going to swap out backup ammunition now. So we are starting to move now towards being predominantly a melee kind of build with this character. And backup ammunition, we've lost a lot of the good things that we were using with this. And uh, to be honest, the turn that it takes to play backup ammunition and then kind of like keep it going and we have to kind of work for it. It's just not really how we're playing the game. The strategy of playing this kind of build is to start to try and get into people's faces, use these rocks to be able to block up things, start doing one-on-one -on -one kind of things engagements with your crack heart and then get yourself into a position to do some big aoe damage attacks and, and use some of your uh, little stone pummels and things like that to be able to uh to control the battlefield and be able to to kill off lots of enemies at once so backup ammunition is it's still very strong and uh, a lot of people will run this into the ground for many levels personally here i like to get rid of backup ammunition and we bring stone pummel in because we're now just going to be concentrating on doing all of our melee attacks rather than doing our ranged attacks okay moving to level six Level six, we have Tig Pit, which is kind of a bit of a meme, really, this card has become. It's really not very good, and it's a bit weird as to why a card like this is at level six, which has, you know, to be honest, not a very strong effect in the game. So the top of Tig Pit says create one, two damage stun trap, which is pretty decent. Stun is a very good effect uh, in an adjacent empty hex. Muddle target all adjacent enemies. Now, I guess the reasoning behind this 
supposedly being a level six is because stun is a very strong effect and they probably assumed that you've used obstacles to block off different pathways so you can kind of guarantee that an enemy is going to walk into this and, and maybe stun themselves but then that doesn't really explain as to why you would want to muddle all adjacent enemies because then surely you already have enemies adjacent to you and also this is the top part of a card which just is the most ridiculous thing because the top half of the cards in gloomhaven are the best half of the card this is the premium half of the card you always get damage you get status effects you get everything that basically helps you win the game usually is kind of the top half of the card this is the most premium side of the card the bottom you get movement things you get utility abilities you get heals sometimes like they don't necessarily help you you win this is what helps you win by doing damage and killing things so to have an effect like this occupying a premium half of a card with kind of almost contradictory style things like i don't really understand when they thought this was ever going to be to be good now the only thing that i can reason is that they wanted to balance it with the invisibility because going invisible is very strong it's an incredibly strong thing to do in the game and as the crack card you can probably engineer a way that you can block off an entire you know room by going invisible in the right spot with your obstacles so this could be pretty strong but on 78 initiative you're certainly not going to be able to do it early enough that it's going to matter so you're going to have to pair it with another early card which i just don't really understand how or why you would do that so dig pit is kind of a bit of a meme and kind of like a bit of a card that people get hate on i have yet to find a good reason to ever take dig pit so let me know in the comments below if you ever find a good reason to use dig pit so we will be taking cataclysm here as uh yeah pretty simply really the 26 initiative is very nice to have and the move three and actually being able to upgrade it to a move six with no stipulation this is just a, it could be a straight up move six if we use our element that's really really strong a great amount of movement and is going to help us uh fly around the uh the level nice and easily so cataclysm is a is a nice pickup here so we'll be taking that the card we're going to be getting rid of here is actually rumbling advance similar initiative to cataclysm cataclysm is a little bit earlier but that's pretty negligible 26 and 29 so we're going to get rid of rumbling advance we are going to miss the bottom half of this card but we will be getting something in a few levels which will uh replace this effect for us the heal is something that we probably don't really want to be doing much of like i said before the top half of the card is really the premium action like that's where you want your strongest actions to be that is where the strongest things in gloomhaven usually happen so just having a heal four on the top means we're not actually attacking something that turn which is kind of counterintuitive to how we're playing the character so i think we're pretty happy to get rid of this we are going to miss the elements though so you do have to be a bit more uh, a bit more wary of how you're making your elements when we get rid of this because this was just a super simple way with the move to uh to uh to actually get our element on the bottom half of this card but we're swapping this out now for a cataclysm okay on to level seven so level seven we have meteor which is create one three hex triangle obstacle in empty hexes within range three then we do an attack for and immobilize targeting all enemies adjacent to the obstacle now i have one big problem with this uh with this card and it's this stipulation here three hex triangular obstacle it's not often i found that i will actually find a really good high value opportunity to be able to place a three hex obstacle down if this was three separate obstacles similar to rock slide this would be an amazing effect this would be an excellent effect but because it's one obstacle that has to be triangular and has to be three hexes it just means that you're going to find limited opportunities to actually get the best out of this card and i've just found it to be pretty underwhelming in guildmaster mode now your mileage may vary in the board game because in the board game and in the campaign when digital comes out presumably then we won't actually have these sort of rng dungeon generation right the dungeons are going to be generated actually in a predefined way they're going to be scenarios that are designed the enemies are going to start in specific spots the uh the layout of the level is going to be very specific so you may find that you get more uh leverage and a little bit more mileage sorry out of meteor in the uh the actual uh tabletop campaign version of the game versus guildmaster mode in guildmaster mode i usually find that either other obstacles gold enemies hazardous terrain traps you know all of these things usually mean that you, you very rarely find a decent three hex uh a sort of space to put this the move four jump is nice and the 23 initiative is nice but unfortunately not enough to save i think this sort of mediocre top at level seven the other card that we can take here is Brutal Momentum, which is an excellent card and a strict upgrade for us in this build over our Heaving Swing. So this now allows us to push two 
rather than just doing the push one. But the biggest thing that this changes is this line of text here, wall. So this now allows us to push things into a wall rather than just an obstacle. And this actually makes a whole world of difference. This now means that flying enemies can be uh, done with this. So we can now actually do up to four pure damage to flying enemies. So things like living spirits that have high shield, low health, you can pretty much just destroy them very, very quickly with brutal momentum. It's, it's excellent for doing that. You also can go against just archers who are just at corners of rooms. It just means that you are much, much more likely to trigger this effect. Also, we can upgrade this push two to a push three if we want to do to do even more damage. It can get pretty nuts. So yeah, this is just a, a an excellent effect and you will, uh, you will absolutely love this. Um, and, and the wall section here is just such a big buff to this effect for us. The bottom as well with the add plus one to all of our ranged attacks this round. Again, this is pretty similar. In fact, it's exactly the same, but now we have the element so we can add to a plus two. It's not something that we're crazy, crazy, um, you know, into and we're going to be using a lot of, but it might be nice to pair it with a dirt tornado, for example, on an attack or something like that. At some point during the game, you might find a decent, uh, a, a decent reason to play this. So we are taking Brutal Momentum here and we are going to be doing the like for like swap with Heaving Swing because this is just strictly a better card and just straight up an upgrade over this effect for us. Okay, level 8. So level 8, Rocky End. We have Destroy All Obstacles within range 2. We can spend an Earth Element to get an additional range on this and it's an Attack X where X is twice the number of hexes the destroyed obstacles occupy. There's two... There's one thing that I really dislike about this card, and the one thing that I really dislike about this card is it is a single target attack, which to me just doesn't seem to be uh, the way that we're kind of gravitating towards like what we're trying to do with our character. Single target attacks are um, are fine, but doing all of this sort of doing all of this, destroying all of our obstacles just so that we can potentially do one big attack to one target perhaps against a boss you'd find that this card would be pretty decent being able to you know set up the room in a nice way with rock slide being able to place lots of obstacles around deal with all of the boss's minions and then you've just got the boss right at the end and then you could destroy all of your obstacles and do one huge heroic hit to try and kill the boss right i think that's like where this card was sort of envisions like what its role would be right you play it right at the end of the scenario and you do it to sort of like you know final uh final kill the the boss but it just doesn't seem to do enough for me even if you were to burn let's say three or four obstacles you know you could be doing an attack of eight but it's just it's just not great doing it on a single target i would expect like a multi-target effect for this it's just uh yeah it's just i don't know it's just a little bit of odds of what we're trying to do uh, compared to some of the other things and I think it's just a bit of an all-in an all-in kind of card which I don't really like and the other thing that this card's kind of got against it is this bottom half of this card so the move six but the movement must end in a hex adjacent to an obstacle and the problem that I have with this is that most of our uh, obstacle cards well our only real obstacle card we've got now is rock slide and this is range four so essentially we're only gonna be able to place obstacles within range four so even if we were to go rock slide and then play this in conjunction with rock slide we're only gonna be able to use it as a move four and we've got plenty of other cards that give us move like move four right you know that's not something that we're really lacking a, a move four so i often find that this move six usually just ends up not really working at all it's going to be much less than six to be honest sometimes you're just going to want to use it it's just the bottom move two. the top because it's a burn you're just going to have like stuck in your hand until you find the perfect opportunity which is another thing i don't like cards where they require a lot of setup and this requires a lot of setup in order for you to to be good it's not a very simple combo to pull off you're going to pull it off late so that means that this card's going to be stuck in your hand until that perfect opportunity which means that you're potentially going to be using this card for either its base to move or its base to attack at some point during the uh during the uh the game which I, I i is never a nice thing to have to do you know sometimes you do have to do that and suck it up and deal with it but it's not something that you should be you know shooting for this move six just does not allow us to move forward in the dungeon because when we're moving forward in the dungeon we don't know if there's going to be obstacles in front of us in the next room or something like that so how do we even kind of do this i presume as well that we must clarify i mean i've never played this card in digital because the other card we're going to take a look at in a sec is what we're going to take but this move six uh, I mean, I presume you must be able to see the obstacle first in digital to then be able to move. So just, I mean, just save yourself the trouble of trying to work that one out and don't take this card. <laughs> and instead, we're going to take Lumbering Bash, which is just 
a much better card. The move to attack five on the top, and we get to make the earth element, and it gets us an XP. Just a really simple card. Works very well with Forceful Storm, because we could potentially just attack something for seven. Like how I said that you could potentially attack something with Rocky End, right? For potentially you could attack a single target for eight, burn all of his stuff. I mean, Lumbering Blash plus Forceful Storm does seven on its own without you having to burn anything. And it's it's just it's a two card combo, requires no real setup. So I don't see why you would ever take Rocky End from top of that. Anyway, I'll stop hating on Rocky End. Lumbering Bash is is a very strong card. Getting that element is, is excellent. The bottom of this card is something we're not really going to be doing. However, you know, there have been some niche opportunities to do so. It's actually very good at doing some of the achievements um, within Guildmaster mode. So if you're trying to do, uh, to unlock some of the heal achievements and stuff like that, this is actually like really really good for doing that because you can get five free heal actions out of it for doing nothing it's it's really good for doing some of the achievements but the move to attack five is definitely why we're taking it and making the element just yeah perfect it's exactly what we really want from a card so we're gonna be taking out massive boulder here as well because now we are sort of we started to move away from our mainly our ranged damage attacks attack three is not going to be good enough most likely and uh the move four we've got better movement now on some of our other cards and uh we can move two on the top of this anyway get our element do an attack five so this just basically does that card a little bit better for us now so definitely something that's uh that's you know, improving us a lot this lumbering bash okay so level nine level nine we get blind destruction which is just an insane card blind destruction i think is one of one of the best reasons to play crag Heart is to enjoy getting up to level nine and getting to play blind destruction so the top of this card is just a massive upgrade to massive boulder which is another reason why we could drop massive boulder in the last level and also the bottom is just a massive upgrade to rumbling advance i just love that this thematically this card is just two of your kind of key cards as you've been leveling up sandwiched into one buffed up and just you know overpowered to the max right now the top of blind destruction does affect your allies and it does do pure damage to your allies and pure damage to those enemies too so this gives you a great opportunity to target something that maybe has low shield you know but is next to a high shield enemy to try and do the max amount of damage you can because whatever number that you do to that figure like the actual amount of damage that that enemy takes is the amount that everybody else takes so you want to target the guy that has no shield maybe a really high health pool something like that draw your times two right get your strength and going so that you've got your advantage and just absolutely just destroy everything around it but that does mean that you have to be very very careful about the allies with this one this card in general across both the top and the bottom can do a lot of damage to your allies over the course of a scenario so you do have to be careful especially if you're playing like if you're a level nine crack heart and your friend has just retired a character and they've come in as a a low level character that's maybe a little bit weaker starts with a, a lower health pool you've got to be careful with this because this could really can really really hurt you but also the bomb of this pairs so well with a pair of boots being able to just run around an entire level and do two damage to every enemy is just super super strong this pairs so well you can actually chuck a jump on here as well it's an expensive enhancement but an enhancement i think in guildmaster you will be able to get chuck a jump on this card Ooh. we'll talk a little bit about pulverize but blind destruction is just so good that the pulverize really just pales in comparison the problem with with pulverize is that it's against blind destruction but also just that it's two burns again you've got a burn on the top and a burn on the bottom which as i said before with uh with rocky end if you have a burn on something then it's either got to be something that you want to do immediately that's very very simple to do perhaps gives you a persistent ability for the rest of the scenario or perhaps it's just you know it's such a strong effect that you always play it in your first turn something like that there are some cards that you know certain characters have that, that you may want to do that but otherwise you're going to have this stuck in your hand either used as a move to or an attack to until you find the perfect time to use it and that's just not very efficient way of playing the game so attack three push two target all adjacent enemies sounds reasonable not bad but you may push the targets into hexes containing obstacles in each case the obstacle is destroyed the target suffers two damage and you gain one experience point it's just not as good as our other cards i mean we've literally just picked up you know brutal momentum at level seven that does a similar effect only to one enemy granted but does a similar effect counts walls which makes it a lot better and isn't a burn so i just don't understand like why 
pulverize is really any better. Plus, pulverize really does incentivize you to have to have set up the level with your obstacles in a way to get the max value out of this, right? You really do need to have set this up. I mean, if this was a bigger attack or a bigger push, maybe it would be slightly better. I, I don't know, but just the, it's just so underwhelming, really, and just requires you to put so much work in. Now, the bottom half of this as well, target, uh, attack two, target all adjacent enemies, move five and jump, attack three, target all adjacent enemies. Now, this is arguably better than the top because you could just stay in one place and do an attack two, ignore this, just decide to stay in one place, and then do an attack three and just hit a lot of people. Now, the problem with this is that at level nine, you would much rather, in my opinion, I would much rather be doing one single attack of five than doing an attack of two than an attack of three. The reason for this being that we are going to be against enemies that have got lots of shield, we're going to be against enemies that potentially, you know, can uh, curse us and do lots of other things. You know, we're going to be drawing cards from our deck. We want to basically just go all in on one attack, right? I want to use my eagle eye goggles on one big attack where I attack everything all at once with the highest possible value that I can. And that is the way that you kind of do the most amount of damage or that's the best way you, you optimize yourself to be able to do the most amount of damage the only time stuff like this is very good is when for example if we were to tag poison onto this for example which would then it's this potentially up to an attack uh, four because of the poison that all of the enemies have but just an attack two against most enemies at level nine in Guildmaster, especially if you're playing on insane is going to be you know it's going to do nothing against most of the enemies really it's very unlikely that this that this does much damage at all the move five jump is a nice amount of movement the two i say we're at level nine now so the experience points are kind of irrelevant at this point and the attack three is not much better than the attack two so just yeah unfortunately i really underwhelm the card but blind destruction is just such a strong and uh an interesting card that i think you know hey we're, we're not going to worry too much about not the about pulverize Okay, so now we've got Blind Destruction. The card we're going to be uh, swapping out is Crater. The reason why we've kept Crater for all this time, this might be a card that other people will, will get rid of or maybe not even run to begin with, but I really like the bottom of Crater. I really like the ability to be able to do that additional damage. Again, it's three pure damage goes through shields. I think pure damage that goes through shields is the most important thing that the crack Heart can offer in a party of mercenaries. There's not many other characters that actually have access to that kind of effect, or if they do, it's just not as prevalent or as easy to, to do as the crack card. So I really like the bottom of this card. I also love the fact that it gets us into an awesome position to be then be able to do like forceful storm unstable upheaval on the following turn. I just I just have you know I, I just love the bottom of this card and the top being able to push something you know push something into a trap push something away that potentially might be doing some uh like a big attack but isn't moving very much you know things like uh, living corpses i think that there's a there's like a some corner case use to the top of this but now blind destruction with a pair of boots is kind of strictly better because it can do two damage it's not a burn uh it doesn't do the three damage it doesn't have the jump which is why i think you might want to try and tag a jump on the bottom of this card if you can afford it but so uh, yeah it's, it's it's definitely a a strict upgrade there Okay, so here we are now at level nine. I'll also now put on the screen a graphic for the board game so you can see all of the cards nice and easily in the board game format. So you can uh, can easily reference that. As you can see that we are just like really, really great now at messing around with obstacles with Rock Slide. Definitely a card you're gonna wanna use stamina potions on at times to get back and to use multiple times to make sure you can set up the scenario. We're going to be using uh, Brutal Momentum to do lots of pure damage to enemies. We're still going to keep that trusty combo of Forceful Storm and Unstable Upheaval in our back pocket to be able to do some big attacks and some big potential stuns using Warhammer. Uh, if we've still got Warhammer at this point in time, maybe a level nine, you might have swapped out for something better, which I'll uh, get into with items in a second. We've also still got Dirt Tornado kicking about, which we may want to enhance, which we'll talk about enhancements in a second too. But as you can see, like generally speaking we are a really strong character at just dealing with enemies with shield controlling the battlefield and doing some big kind of uh, melee attacks against enemies uh, to be able to uh, well to just do a hell of a lot of damage and um, this is definitely one of the most fun characters in my opinion to play and has become a personal favorite just because of the general play style that this build has with being able to just mess around with obstacles and just kind of almost bend the kind of the level to your will as the crack card. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about items. So items for this build, you can see that I've got some items here, which are ones that uh, I've got in my playthrough, which are some high level items, but Eagle Eye Goggles is a fantastic item and definitely one that you want to keep throughout the entire playthrough. I can recommend that you use this uh, pretty much all the way up to level nine. 
If you have no uh, heal effects through your cards, that means that you don't have access to the self kind of strengthen effect, which is something that, um, you know, something like the Spell Weaver can get access to very early. So Eagle Eye Goggles will probably stay as your main kind of head uh, slot item for pretty much the entire game you may consider changing to hawk elm if you wanted to to try and use clear the way in that fun way that's not a not a bad thing to to do but i like eagle eye goggles myself so i try and keep that one going now for your body item you can really go for lots of different things i usually go for an armor item with my crack card because because i'm we're playing more of a melee kind of build i like to go in and start doing damage you know being up in people's faces and unfortunately being up in people's faces often means that you end up taking damage so having like a decent armor set is pretty good we also have access to the perk that removes the negative conditions for this you can kind of automatically just straight away that's just an indication that that particular character is going to be good at doing some kind of tanking you know they've got enough health to do a little bit of tanking that's kind of the, the game's way of telling you hey this character can wear a set of armor you know they're not going to be uh you're not going to be in too much uh extra danger if you were to run in so you've definitely got some some health to deal with that to, to deal with that extra damage you could also use something like the draken scale armor here uh making you immune to poison and wound personally i think that this is a better effect so i, I wouldn't really worry too much about that so you'll probably be looking at level one you'll probably be looking at hide armor or something like that over this so you'll probably be looking at something like hide armor i think in your hand slot now ancient drill is the best in my opinion is the best hand slot item in the game and is one of the reasons why i absolutely love the crack art is that if i can get this item and play this on the crack art it just turns unstable upheaval into just this ridiculous uh, attack i absolutely love it if you can get this item you know this is definitely a wish list item if you can find it i absolutely love it however the chances are you aren't going to be able to get this uh, early on. Well, you definitely aren't going to be able to get it early on in Guildmaster mode. So Ancient Drill is obviously the most ideal thing that you would want. However, I would look at level one to get something like a Warhammer. Warhammer is great. Combos with Unstable Upheaval. Combos uh, so well with that, able to stun, you know, an entire room sometimes with enemies. So Warhammer is excellent. Definitely the kind of, uh, the kind of item that you're going to want at level one. For your leg items, you're just going to want boots. Any kind of boots is good. Rocket boots, obviously, is the best boots in the game. If you can get rocket boots, then obviously use rocket boots. However, any boots will really do for you. You may consider getting some jump boots, potentially going for wing shoes. Depends on how you're finding your play style. This is something that I actually encourage players to figure out for themselves a little bit more. I mean, generally speaking, I think that any of the kind of like early level boots these boots of striding with a plus two move are better than wing shoes just generally because jump is not as useful in an effect early on in the game but jump can be a lot more useful later on however as the crack heart you do have a lot of cards that do have jump on them so like for example on the bottom of crater we actually do have jump already on there so we have ways to set up our big attacks through our cards rather than relying on our items to do that However, like boots of dashing, I think are excellent. Rocket boots obviously are some of the best boots in the game, really. So, you know, if you can get rocket boots, that'd be excellent. Small items at level one, you're going to want power. You're going to want power potions. You're going to be wanting your uh, minor power potions, or then upgrading to a major power potion. Again, we are a damage based character, so we're going to be taking uh, damage based small items going to want stamina potion like every character does you might consider getting some health potions actually because you are going to be doing a little bit of tanking you are going to be in there i think a health potion is not a bad pickup at all for this character and eventually you're hopefully going to be trying to pick up some of these stronger um some of the stronger small items things like star earring obviously sun earring these are extremely good sun earring is very good because it refresh it refreshes your armor and your eagle eye goggles so being able to use this will refresh both your armor and your eagle eye goggles allowing you to use them without long resting very very strong star earring is one of the best small items in the game essentially you're going to be looking at getting probably some sort of healing potion a stamina potion and definitely a power potion if i could only have one potion at the beginning of the game it would be a power potion for sure okay let's take a look at perks the crack hearts perks are not the best in the game it's not awful it's not great so 
in this kind of rough order, this is how you're going to want to do it. You're going to want to try and thin your deck as much as possible to try and give yourself the best opportunities to draw your positives when you're going to have your enhancements. So getting rid of your minus numbers is going to be a bit of a priority here. So as your first enhancement, I would really consider focus or you can go for endurance depending on if you've got that item if you've got hide armor early and you've actually bought one then definitely go for this but you will need to make a decision if you do decide to buy hide armor then you have to pretty much take this as your first one if not then go up here and take this so because we've got uh, an item here that's giving us minus ones we're definitely going to take this first then we're going to move on to doing focus and we're just going to max focus out here straight away So this gives us a really nice, um, like now we've actually started to move our deck in a nice positive direction here. We've actually only got sort of four cards here, which are bad if we draw them. Minus one is not terrible. Minus two is obviously quite often as bad as a miss when you're doing low value attacks. So really we, we're starting to move in the right direction here with our cards. Now, Savage is a perk that I think a lot of people will fall into the trap of. I believe this to be a trap. I don't like the idea of making my deck bigger and more swingy that's just not something that i like to do in gloomhaven i like to have a deck that is consistent i know that if i draw you know if i'm doing an attack three i would like to think that on average i do three damage maybe a little bit more that would be nice but i don't i definitely do not want to be making my deck more swingy by saying oh now i'm going to be overkilling things uh, and also sometimes i'm going to be doing a lot less damage especially through shield during a minus two against a shielded enemy is just basically a is basically a miss so if this was add an extra miss and two plus twos would people still take it uh, probably not and, and i think that you should view it in that way in my opinion so we're not going to be taking this we can take dust pretty happy to take dust here to remove those again we're trying to move ourselves towards this kind of thing you might not want to use dust straight away though so i would actually consider maybe taking days or hobble first so let's take uh days here an extra plus two take two of that once we've done that twice we can now remove all of our four this is there you don't want to fall into the trap of doing dust too early because obviously if we if we did dust as our first perk then actually like there's quite a good chance that we're going to start drawing our minus ones so you definitely want to move your deck in the positive direction of drawing positive damage before removing these because you'd much rather do your base attack value and just do you know no additional no more no less than uh than do less so removing all of those as your first perk or within your first sort of like three or four perks is is not not a great idea to so try and avoid doing that that's another little trap to fall into you don't want to be making it so you're very swingy you're either drawing minus one or plus one right you want to be this is a, this is a nice sweet spot to be in early in the middle of the game okay so now we're going to be taking a uh, hobble the so hobble is plus one and immobilize you're pretty nice we'll do those now at this point this would be you completely maxed out you're going to be able to earn perks through um you're going to be able to earn perks through the achievement system in gloomhaven guildmaster mode or through battle goals if you're playing tabletop or it will be battle goals in the campaign version of gloomhaven digital 2 once that comes out so this is where you would consider maybe taking the the push i think i think adding push is probably the best effect here um you don't really care about making these i definitely don't want this Again, if you need your element, you should be making your element because you need it. I, I'm never a fan of these elemental flips that don't really kind of like, especially when you're playing the Krakar, who's got a kind of a, a fairly big deck. It's just an elemental flip. If this was similar to the Spellweavers, which is a plus two and an element, that's very strong because it's giving us an element and it's doing plus two damage. That's, that's great. That's really helping us out. But this is just a, you know, make an element and flip it. I mean chances are that you are planning ahead and making your element because you're going to plan to use it anyway so i don't really like these i think if you wanted to take more i would maybe consider taking the push because push can, can quite often be good but again bear in mind that any rolling modifiers that you take can come back to bite you when you have advantage and you you draw this because if you draw a rolling modifier and this and you have advantage then actually you will end up missing because the way that 
the advantage works with rolling modifiers is that you just you basically draw two cards and you plus them together so if you were to draw a rolling modifier you don't draw another card well you draw two cards and it could be this which, which would end up with a miss so i did do a rules video about this where i really cocked that that rule up a little bit and had to actually clarify it in the uh, description so i'll put a little link in the top right hand corner now for you to check out that video if you like but bear in mind you're going to need to read the description because even i screwed that uh, that rule up there in that video Okay, so finally, let's have a look at enhancements and what we can do to enhance. So with enhancements, you're only really going to want to enhance things that uh, are going to stick around and that you're going to be using for the whole duration, especially if you're coming from the tabletop. If from tabletop, you don't get any kind of discounts or rebates on your enhancements. They do stick on the character if you'd like to play them again. However, if you're playing Guildmaster mode, you can actually just sell your enhancements back. So there's nothing really to lose. But some of the like most important ones is you'll hear a lot of people talk about Curse Nado or Wound Nado or Poison Nado, whatever you want to call it. So basically enhancing this top attack one with some sort of ability that will, will be super powerful. Now, Curse is a really strong ability it will if you can curse you know four or five of these that can save you quite a bit of damage over the course of a scenario i really like poison as well especially if you're playing aggressive i think the poison is the aggressive thing to take here curse would be the more defensive thing to take so depending on how you like to play i could see you taking either of those two things wound is also incredibly strong poison versus wound uh it depends really on on your style of play if you're planning on doing lots more aoe's you could argue that poison is better but wound is just very good at um especially if you go early is very good at just doing extra damage over the course of the scenario you know it, it, wound goes through um shields as well so I would probably give the nod to wound over poisons, but but absolutely, depending on your playstyle, I could see you taking poison. So if we take wound, it's like 150. It's a lot of gold, but definitely worth doing. On forceful storm, you may consider if you really wanted to to add an extra area to this. This could be an incredibly strong, cheap enhancement in guildmaster mode. However, we're going to be using the bomb of this most of the time, especially at higher levels. So this this effectiveness of this will, will definitely fall off as a, as you progress one of the most important ones that i i really like to bring in and it's it's fairly cheap is although we get rid of heaving swing towards the end you can add an extra push on this for a cheap 30 gold potentially getting you the opportunity to do even more damage here i'm gonna sell i'm gonna sell that real quick so i remember and i don't lose my money uh, the other thing that you can do is obviously then do exactly the same as that but do it on brutal momentum so you can do the same thing on Brutal Momentum. It's going to cost you a lot more, though, because it's a level 7 card. So, bear that in mind. But it's an incredibly strong thing to do. Likewise, on Blind Destruction, adding a jump or something like that to this could be very expensive. I've now run out of gold, so I can't do it. But these are all kind of good enhancements. I would suggest that Dirt Tornado is the one that I would definitely suggest getting early because it is uh, just really, really strong and will help you out like a huge amount um could potentially do a lot of damage with uh with this effect and there we have it guys that is the build guide video hopefully you found the information useful again apologies about the more condensed style but i really need to start rattling these guides out for you guys so that by the time the game comes out of early access i hopefully have a guide for pretty much every single character in the game so that is my aim so i'm gonna have to cut some corners here and there but hopefully you still found the information really really useful and will help you in building your own crack heart as always guys if you did find the information useful please consider hitting the like button and if you would like to see more from me consider subscribing or checking out some of my other videos in the channel down below we also have a community discord server that's filling up with people looking for other people to play gloomhaven digital with and just to chat gloomhaven with if you've got any rules questions or if you got any sort of gloomhaven related questions or just want to have a chat with me that's one of the best places to go so link to the community discord is in the description and of course if you do want to catch me live you can always catch me over at twitch.tv slash request every monday wednesday and sunday but apart from that, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. I will catch you in the next one. Bye. <laughs> well, it was fun, guys. That was a good scenario, I think. Um, I think we can learn a bit more from this. Um, I think we don't really need to play on this difficulty level, do we, really? <laughs> what is this? They're only moving one. 
These guys aren't moving, so at least I can get an attack in before I run away. Oh, yeah. Looks pretty good to me.